Hey there, welcome to Drew Bentley Guitar. Let's take a look at add nine six and sus chords. This is one of my absolute favorite subjects in the whole entire world. Uh, what are they? How do we use them? Let's take a look at these chords. So if we start with the C major scale and go do re mi fa so la ti do. Those are numbers in the scale, in the scale degrees. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. So you can see if I go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, that's a ninth above the root note. If I were to go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, it's a sixth above the root. 1, 2, 3, 4, fourth above the root. So this is a ninth, uh, this is a sixth, and this is a, that's actually a perfect fourth, but you get the idea. So what we want to do is take this triad and do some man manipulation with the triad. So if I play one, three, five, do, mi, so, mi, do, like that, instead of playing this, I'm going to play this. I'm playing the root and the second and the fifth. So remember, the second is an octave lower than the nine. So you'll see this sometimes written as like a C sus two. C sus two is the same as a C at nine, but the nine is in the first octave, not the second octave. Uh, you can also have the nine in the bass too, and it's for a moment later. It's called a slash chord. But anyways, so if I play this C at nine, basically I can do two things. I can play the chord and just let it resonate, and it's a very um, kind of rhetorical thing. It's it, it kind of leaves you with a question. I love the sound of these because they're very open-ended and they don't have a lot of resolution. But you can also resolve. If I go, get a resolution there. So if I go, versus, so that's the, that's what it's doing. This is, do me so me do, and now I'm going do, 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 do. So do, 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 do. The nine resolves, the second resolves to the third. So that's a nice sound. The sus chord, if I go one, two, three, four, this is do, re, mi, fa. The fa wants to resolve down to me. So the nine's going upwards. The sus is going down. So you can play the sus chord and not resolve it, like I said, and just let it be ringing out like that. It's a beautiful sound. And again, to me, it's like, it's, leaves you uh, asking a question like very, very, um, I don't know what the word is, I can't even describe it, uh, pastel, let's call it pastel. So we can resolve these like, or, or we could just not, and let's let them uh, be hanging. The sixth chord, if I go one, two, three, four, five, six, this is going to resolve back down from La down to Sol not. Sometimes they don't resolve. It's a lot of songs that just have six chords as the sound of the song. Like for example, if I play like a, like a Glenn Miller kind of sound. Those are sixths. So you hear these sounds all the time. At nine, very popular sound like that. You have at nine. You have the uh, sus chords, very popular. Here's a couple of sus chords examples. Very famous, or if I play like a. That's a sus chord. I did a six chord, add nine. I mean, just basically any song that goes like. Those are all sus chord, or uh, those are all add nines. Very uh, popular sound. So, Here's what's happening theoretically. Our one chord was C, the two chord is D minor. So check this out. This is kind of an amazing uh, discovery I had uh, for all these years of teaching lessons. The D note is the second of C, right? The F note is a four and, and the A note is the sixth. So D minor equals those three notes, the add nine, the six, and the sus. And I think that's pretty spectacular. Um, so basically, the D minor chord superimposed over the C chord is how we get these notes. Now, I will say I've tried this experimentally before with uh, 
with a looper. I probably could do it for a lesson here on this uh, channel. Mm -hmm. If I combine both of those together, it sounds like nothing. It becomes very brown because you have three minor sounds and you have three major sounds and together they all just sound terrible. However, if you have two major sounds and three minor sounds, it's going to lean towards sounding minor. If you have three major sounds and two minor sounds, it's going to lean towards sounding major. It's pretty an incredible uh, sort of circumstance. So sometimes we'll add two of those together at the same time. So on things like that, we're kind of doing two at the same time. We're playing the sixth of G and the sus. It's actually a C chord ultimately. It becomes C over G. But the point is that we're doing two notes together to uh, kind of make this movement. So you can see if we look at sort of our uh, fun uh, func the function of these chords, um, in the key of C, one four five is C F G, and two four six would be uh, this two chord is D minor, and the three chord I'm sorry is E minor, and the six chord is A minor, right? So that's the secondary chords. So what's happening is your C add nine actually sounds almost like C to D minor. Here's C to D minor. That's an actual chord change. C to C at nine kind of gives you that impression. It's an impressionistic switch. It's not actually a chord change, but it kind of makes you feel like it's a chord change, but it's not. If I play C to A minor, absolutely a chord change, but C to C six, something changed, right? So to the, to the listener, it sounds like something's changing, but we're not actually changing the chord. Again, I call this a soft chord change. If I play C to A minor, or C to D minor, the other one then would be if I play C to F. So a song's like, well, maybe like... That's actually changing the chord, but if I play this to this, see, it's it's an impressionistic sound. Play hey, the songs if in the mind of things I'm saying, I'm in tune, right in tune. See, so it's not exactly the same as this. I play old cadence, it's a soft chord change. So in the open chords, you've seen these before. Here's C add nine, here's a D add nine. Going through the cage system, right? So you've seen these before, going through the cage system. Here's C add nine. Here's an A add nine. A G add nine would be like this. An E add nine would be like this. And a D add nine would be like this. The C sus is here. The A sus is here. The G sus is here. The E sus is here. And the D sus is here. And then we can look at the C6 chord. It's here. The A6 chord is like this. The G6 chord is like this. The E6 chord is like this. The D6 chord is like this. And we can also do these with minors as well. Uh, the, the issue with that is if you add the 7, it becomes a minor 7. So it's a little different. Uh, it's a little trickier to get these to work without adding the 7. But if we can do some kind of further up the neck versions, like here's a minor nine, or sorry, yeah, a minor, a, a, a minor add nine. And here's an A minor six. And an A minor sus would actually be something like this. So you can see there's no seventh in that. As soon as I add a seventh into it, it becomes a different sound altogether. The seventh makes a difference. So we can do the same thing with the minor chord too. It's just a little more uh, tricky. So here's the next thing. You can play these uh, moving the notes through the chords or not, right? So for example, if I play this, there's a minor version. I'm moving from, this is the third of the chord, that's the add nine, that's the sus, and that's the third. But you don't have to do that. You could also do something like this. Natural Science and Rush, they're just add nine. There's no movement. It's just a lot of songs are made with these sounds uh, baked into the, the chords themselves. So this is basically how you create um, Western harmony. Uh, in a nutshell, you're moving the notes through the chords and you create these, these movements. 
it kind of becomes like a carnival of guitar. So basically you can kind of learn how to do these up and down the guitar neck and they're beautiful sounding. I do them all the time because they sound way more open than they would be if you just played like a standard bar chord. Instead of playing that, maybe I'll play this. And it's nice. And on, on the guitar, it sounds really good. One of the things about guitar that's interesting is um, we can only play so many notes at one time. We only have four fingers and six strings. So every time I play with a piano player, I feel like this uh, they're overwhelming me because they have 10 fingers. So they, they play a lot of sevenths all the time. On guitar, a lot of times we're skipping a lot of notes. And that was, that's what makes guitar so good. All the Hendrix stuff, like these little things like this, it's a fifth with an add nine added to it. Just a fifth and then add nine. It's very kind of hollow sounding and haunting, I think. And I love that sound. I mean, Jimmy's like one of the kings of this. Adding these add nine, six and sus chords. Eric Johnson comes to mind. Uh, Alex Lyson, Rush. Lots of nice textural stuff when you do this. It's a beautiful sound. Um, so what you want to do is start to uh, experiment and learn how to play these across the neck. Now, one more... Uh, kind of cool thing you can do with this as well, is if you do a slash chord, like I mentioned at the beginning of the lesson. So if you look at like the add nine, if we do, a, um, let's say this uh, C chord here, I'm putting the D at the top, but what if I couldn't do that because I didn't have a D down on the bottom? I could play the C chord here like this, and now the D's in the bottom down here, see? So I played it a little bit differently, and that's called a slash chord. So you hear that all the time. The Steely Dan stuff. Very, it's very jazzy sounding if you do this, and it ends up having uh, another, again, a really kind of rhetorical, pastel kind of sound. We're not playing sevenths, we're not playing triads, we're playing this in-between zone between triads and sevenths. And you can play triads, and you can play sevenths, and you can play add nine, and they all sound good. And they, they sound good in progressions too, if I play something like them. Peg, right? That's uh, Steely Dan. They're using add nines in that sequence. It's a beautiful sound. So um, I'll do a lesson on how to learn these in the first position and utilize those through the first position. And I'll do a couple of lessons, uh, different, different uh, techniques and concepts to move them up the guitar neck so you can learn how to play these through the caged system. I've got some lessons worked out to do that to help to make sense of that. But um, I swear by these, the sound of these. I do these all the time. And I don't think I'd like to actually play the guitar without playing these sounds anymore because everything that, about them just sounds so nice and open. And they sound, uh, to me, one of my favorite sounds in the world. Maybe it's because I'm a daydreamer. <laughs> I like to just dream about stuff. And I play these chords and I just think, hmm, what am I thinking about now? What am I thinking about? And it just brings me to another, another realm, I guess. So uh, nice to add this into your arsenal. So that's the add nine, the six, and the sus, this elusive sounds. And again, you can do this with minors as well. But if you add the seventh in, in either major or minor, it becomes something different. The add nine becomes a ninth chord. The sus chord becomes an eleventh chord. And the sixth chord becomes some sort of thirteenth chord. Whether it's major, minor, and dominant depends on the guide tones. If you watch the video on what major, minor, and dominant are, you'll see that the guide tones make a difference. But we're not even dealing with sevenths here at all. We're just dealing with uh, not even necessarily the third. You can have the third or not. It doesn't matter. If the third's like an octave away from the add nine, it will work. If they're right next to each other, you get a warble. Sometimes you get like this major second happening, and it's a, it could be a little bit abrasive. Uh, pretty much you want to separate those. But add nine, six, and sus are wonderful. I, I, I love the sound of these, and I use these all the time either to move notes through chords, like I was saying. Uh, you can see how the melodies, like if you just analyze any Beatles song or U2 song, some of the great songwriters, you're going to see these nines and these sixes and these elevens uh, or susses just kind of floating around in there, whether it's through the melodic parts of the singing or the additional guitar parts or the rhythm parts themselves will have these. Uh, some of the greatest guitar hooks of all time are add nine, six, and sus chords like, uh, like Panama. It's one of the most famous sus chords there is. There's so many of these things uh, here. There's a nine right there. And he has also the B in there. So it's, it's nine, but it's actually an octave, doubled. See how that sounds very compelling? I, I could, uh, bands like Creed come to mind. Uh, the add nines used all the time for some of that stuff with Creed. I want to say one more thing too. You'll notice 
uh, this is the last thing about add nine six and such. If you look at the D chord, if I go like this, do re mi fa sol, check this out. That's the root. That's the add nine. That's the third. That's the sus. That's the fifth. There's the sixth. There's the major seventh again. And there's the root note again. See, so I'll make a bunch of lessons doing stuff like that to illustrate how you can move these through the chords. All right, thanks so much for checking out today's video. I hope you uh, enjoyed yourself. Please subscribe to the channel if you've not already, and I'll catch you at the next lesson.